What's up, YouTube? Brian here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode, I'm always contending for the faith once for all delivered to the saints. And on this episode, we're talking about things that we can do to catechize our children while we're still at home with them. Stick around. <music> So it's been a while. Ideas might be running dry. A lot of us throughout the United States are still safer at home. And we're looking for things to do to engage our kids. Maybe you can't go to church. You can't put them in Sunday school. Uh, going through Luther Small Catechism might just be boring. You're looking for ideas and activities to engage them. And I'm here to make a suggestion for you because my kids thought this was particularly cool. So what I have in here, it's called uh, a Rose of Jericho plant. And uh, I ordered this right around Easter time, and it was a great teaching tool for them about Easter. But there's more to teach your children with this plant than just Easter. And it's okay, I know, Ryan, it's May, but it is still Easter. You see, Easter is a season that lasts for 50 days. So it is still the Easter season. You can see over here, I've still got my Easter lily plants. Uh, the, the flowers have fallen off, but the plants are still green and luscious and beautiful to look at. But this plant right here, uh, while, while the Easter lilies can teach you about the open tomb, about the trumpet of music, uh, uh, all sorts of things that the Easter lily can show to your children, and of course they smell amazing, the Rose of Jericho uh, is is a phenomenal plant, and I got mine. Where else? Where else would Ryan get it? Ryan got it from Legacy Icons. So this is how it came. So let's open it up and let's talk about how we can teach our children about uh, Easter and uh, one more theological idea that this plant can help us teach our children about. So when you get this plant, uh, I bought mine from Legacy Icons. Uh, at this point in the game, I would encourage you, if not buy from Legacy Icons, definitely buy local, buy small business, do what you can to help them out. Uh, so this, this is it. This is the plant. And you can kind of see here, it's still a little green inside. I did this, this has been uh, like this for about a month. Uh, I did it around Easter time with my kids and uh, let it go for a week or two and then uh, dried it out. So... My kids were intrigued by this because I told them it was a plant and they looked at it and said, Dad, it's dead. Well, the Rose of Jericho goes by another name as well, the Resurrection Plant. So uh, here's all you need to get this started. You need the plant, obviously. You need to understand that this is the top and these are the roots. And then you need to get yourself a dish because like all plants, it requires water. And what I was advised to do uh, by Legacy Icons is to put gravel in here. So this gravel has been cleaned out uh, and it's ready to go. I'm going to make a little divot here that the plant can sit in nice and perfect in the center. And that's it. That's all you need to do for setup. So what, what uh, this Rose of Jericho or this resurrection plant is really... It's a way to teach your children about the resurrection. So that's why we did this at Easter time, because this plant is, is, for all intents and purposes, dead. Now, with every analogy, gosh, I got this mat stuff everywhere. With all analogies, none of them are perfect. So don't read too much into the analogy. So when you talk to your children, for all intents and purposes, this plant is dead. But we've got it all set up in our dish. We've got our cleaned rocks. The last thing we need is water. So I've got some water right here. It's distilled water. Uh, Legacy Icons made the recommendation to use distilled water instead of tap water. So I've got some distilled water right here. And this is all we really need to do with it to get it going. And you pour the water. They rec you can pour on the plant. You can pour it there. That's it. That's all the more water you need. The roots just need to be touching the water. And so what this plant will do with your children is it will teach them about the resurrection. Uh, we're a little beyond Good Friday and all of that, but what we did was around Good Friday is when we put water in here for the plant. And then by Easter, it had opened up. And of course, with Legacy Icons, there was a beautiful surprise inside, which is it's still in there. Uh, that the kids got to enjoy. And so they got to learn a little bit about the resurrection of Jesus Christ from death to life. Another thing you can teach your children 
using this plant, how the resurrection of Jesus Christ is applied to them. It's applied to them, his death and his resurrection, by water, by baptism. So, um, one could say we baptizoed this plant. We washed it with water, or we applied water to it. Uh, I know my evangelical friends will like to say that baptizo means to immerse, uh, and in ancient Greek, baptizo did mean to immerse, but the New Testament's not written in ancient Greek. It's written in a more modern form, Koine Greek. And in the more modern form, Koine Greek, baptizo means to wash with water. So what you teach your children is that they participate in Christ's death and resurrection by their water baptism. And that's really the way we should describe it. I don't think the word baptism actually helps us as Christians because the first, second, third century church didn't read the word baptizo the way we read it, baptism. They read it like um, when you were washed. Uh, so uh, Romans 6, which is the verse I have up behind me, uh, do you not know that all of us who were buried with Christ by being washed with water were buried with him into his death by being washed with water? Cat! Sorry. So we were washed with water. That's what baptism means. And that's how the first century church would have read all of the verses about baptism. And that's why, especially when you talk to Lutherans, we will show you verses in the Bible that you wouldn't think are about baptism, but they are. Because we're looking at it as the washing with water. So Titus 3 is a great example of a baptismal verse that you wouldn't think, you wouldn't find if you just did a concordance search for the word baptism. So what you can teach your children is that they participate in Christ's death and resurrection by baptism. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into his death. So just, a, just as Christ was raised from the dead uh, by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. So this uh, resurrection plant, this Rose of Jericho, is a great teaching tool for your children. Now, a couple of housekeeping things with this Rose of Jericho. As it's opening up, at first, you're going to want to go in and, and just kind of dip it or uh, give it a little bit more water here and there because it's going to suck it all up. Uh, every day, you're going to want to take it out, set it on a paper towel, change out the water. Uh, you're, one day a week, you're going to take the plant completely out and set it on a towel or a paper towel and give it a day of rest. Even, <laughs> even God's creation uh, requires a Sabbath rest, hence the reason God ordained a day of rest for us. So, And even that is, is a teaching tool as well. It's the day of rest. So this is a phenomenal teaching tool. This is a great product. If you want to buy yours, it's available from Legacy Icons at LegacyIcons.com. Otherwise, you don't have to. I would encourage you, like I said, to buy local. So you can let this go for a couple of weeks, change the water out, take it out, put it in, in this mesh bag uh, or whatever it comes with. Keep it in a cool, dry place a month, three months, 10 months, a year. doesn't matter how long you keep it. Uh, this plant is a desert plant, and so it's been designed it evolved over billions of years to do this perfectly. No, that's stupid. It has been designed by God for drought. So it's like a tumbleweed, and it will just tumble about, and when it finds a puddle, there it goes. Uh, and then when the puddle dries up, it curls back up, it tumbles around and looks for the next puddle. This is uh, a plant that uh, is perfectly created, perfectly designed, and even in the fall where there are things like famine and drought, God still sustains his creation and love, even throughout the curse of the fall. So all of these ideas, all of these things are things that you can teach your children with just a simple plant. And I guarantee, I wish I had a camera out when I first did this with my kids because they were, they were amazed and they kept coming back every five, 10 minutes to check on the plant. So really what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking 
and I'm going to set a time lapse on this plant and just let it go for a while. So uh, enjoy the music, enjoy the time lapse. I don't know how long I'm going to let it go, but it'll be in the corner somewhere. How long it actually is, maybe only be a minute of time lapse uh, once I get the final video done. So I hope this helps you uh, to teach the faith to your children, to teach them about Easter, and to teach them that the death and resurrection of Jesus was... You okay? You good? You're not a kitten anymore. You can't do that. Uh, so hopefully... <laughs> she's never been like that in these videos. Um, nudging the camera, falling off chairs. Um, look at you, yeah. You're being a perfect kitten, acting like nothing happened. So I'm going to let the time lapse run. This is a great teaching tool for your children. You teach them how the death and resurrection of Jesus is not only for them, but how they participate in it and how their baptism participates them. Now, another great teaching tool that I would like to point out with this plant, uh, and it's part of the instructions as well, it does not need to be immersed in the water. Um, I poured the water on top because that helps uh, with the process of absorption throughout the plant as a whole. Uh, and so a lot of resources I've looked at say to do that, but it just needs to touch the water. That's it. It just needs to touch the water. So it is important that we understand that baptism is a washing with water. And that's it. And if it was a little bit of water or a lot of water, it doesn't matter. The water just needs to touch us. The water combined with the promise and power of God's word is what makes it baptism. So I'm just going to let the time lapse run on this. I hope uh, this is something that you do indeed do with your children because it's magical to them uh, and it's a great way to teach them the faith while they're having fun at the same time and you don't have to dumb it down. You don't have to veggie tales this, okay? This is a way of teaching your children starting with the presupposition that they're actually intelligent and they can understand much more than you give them credit for. So let's let the time lapse run on this uh, Rose of Jericho, this resurrection plant. And until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won for you by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Thank you.